There are two reasons I'm doing this channel. The first is to give a voice to all those critical thinkers, scientists, professors, and people who are working outside the mainstream that question big physics and big cosmology. The second is to try to communicate to you, the general science-loving public, what this dissident community is all about and how to understand it. Part of this mission is to find vocabulary and concepts that best describe what the community is doing, is thinking, and is meaning with everything they do. I have talked recently about how and why we are currently in model revolution and why there are so many competing models today. I have talked about concepts such as the photon and space-time. Today, I'm going to talk about human labels that I feel best describe the divide between those genuinely seeking scientific truth versus those that are motivated by power and ego and who are holding science back. Today, I'm going to talk about the very important difference between intellectuals and critical thinkers. As some of you may know, I have a master's in linguistics and for the last 35 years have tried to get computers to understand the written word. This makes me acutely aware of the intentions of people and the words they choose to use, especially in science. And in the last 10 to 15 years, many in the dissident community and in the CNPS have started to look closely at the vocabulary they are using when trying to advance science. One example of this is the word energy. 20 years ago, the CMPS, or MPA as it was called, would talk about energy without really thinking of what the word truly meant. Today, most of the CMPS agrees that energy is a concept and not something real. It is a very useful concept, but is mostly agreed that energy is not a real thing. But instead of talking about technical terms that we use for the universe, today I'm turning my attention to words we use to describe ourselves. Although there is in no way a consensus for my personal explanation for these terms and their meanings, I see them as a simple and clear way to distinguish the big science community from the dissident community. These two concepts are intellectuals and critical thinkers. The definition of intellectual is a person possessing a highly developed intellect. Intellect is defined as the faculty of reasoning and understanding objectively, especially with regard to abstract or academic matters. When teaching linguistics at The Ohio State University, I always told my class, words exist because there is a need for those words. A particular word fills a need to describe something important in our world around us. The word intellectual, by definition, is especially linked to abstract and academic matters. And how is the best way to gain abstract and academic matters? In a university, of course. This gives us a clue as to what an intellectual is a person schooled in the university ways. A second clue as to what an intellectual is, is a person with a highly developed intellect. This means a person who is highly and thoroughly trained for many years in reasoning as put forth by universities. Both of these concepts transmit one very important meaning to those who use and understand this word, superiority. People who are schooled at the university or who subscribe to the ways and teachings of a university are considered to be intellectuals, but more important than that, they are considered to be smarter, wiser, and schooled in the truths of the university. To put this simply, intellectuals have superior brains as compared to the rest of us, and with this superiority comes power, ego, and control over what is considered to be truth. 
This is by definition what is called the mainstream. Mainstream science, or more specifically big physics and big cosmology, are where intellectuals, or those who are superior, are trained. The mainstream is where those in our society are considered to hold greater truths about the universe than we ordinary people. We now contrast the word intellectual with a very different concept, that of the critical thinker. When the MPA transitioned to the CMPS, I introduced the words critical thinker as a better word for the word dissident. The word dissident has become synonymous in science with crackpot, or people who have crazy ideas, whereas the term critical thinker seemed to be a better description for those working outside the mainstream. The term critical thinker is composed of two words, critical and thinker. The first word, critical, is defined as expressing adverse or disapproving comments or judgments. The key here is disapproving. The ability to look at anything and have the ability to find fault with it. In modern lingo, this can be said to mean speaking truth to power. The second word, thinker, has the definition of a person who thinks deeply and seriously. The second word in the definition reflects the notion that a person will spend deep and serious time thinking about something. Put the two terms together and you get a person who spends serious time trying to find problems or faults with something. And therein lies the problem between critical thinkers and intellectuals. Where intellectuals are taught truths, critical thinkers are those who spend serious time questioning truths. Thousands of years ago, Aristotle told us very clearly what type of mindset we must have to be a true critical thinker. He said, It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. If you break down what Aristotle is saying, you can see it is almost an exact match for the definition of critical thinker. The phrase, entertain a thought, has the same meaning as thinker. The word entertain gives the idea of spending time or deeply. That is to say, someone who entertains a thought is a deep thinker. And the phrase without accepting it has the same meaning as critical. But Aristotle goes one step further and completely destroys the arrogant concept of intellectual or superior intellect by his use of the word educated in his saying. Here, Aristotle takes the idea of a critical thinker and plants it firmly in the university where it should belong. As I've said many times before, our universities today are not havens for critical thinkers. As Dr. Alexander Unzerker states so eloquently, universities are places for parroting, repeating without thought, repeating without entertaining a truth without accepting it. Universities are places for intellectuals who by definition think themselves to have superior intellects that only can be gotten by learning to parrot established truths. Intellectuals, of course, will claim they too are critical thinkers. The difference is, however, they will claim their brand of critical thinking as superior to those who are not trained in universities. The major flaw with that argument is that critical thinking implies nonconformity, or as Aristotle says, the ability to entertain a thought without accepting it. To the intellect, if you do not accept the group's opinion about a science topic, then you are inferior. The word intellect is the term used by the establishment to force their superiority on those not trained in universities. By definition, an intellect is the opposite of a critical thinker in that the objective of the intellectual is to agree with the university, whereas the critical thinker by nature should always remain a skeptic of mainstream truth. Aristotle makes the fundamental observation of the critical mind, and that is the difference between educated and university. Educated to Aristotle is a state of mind, 
not a diploma from those who claim to have superior intellects. Mainstream, by definition, is comprised of intellectuals, those who consider themselves to be superior and the holders of truth. To join them, you must agree. Dissidents, on the other hand, by nature, start out by disagreeing and taking the time to try to understand deeply a problem in order to make up their own minds. So when someone from mainstream asks you if you have a degree in physics or cosmology, you know you are talking with an intellectual and not a critical thinker. As I state in my documentary film, Einstein Wrong, The Miracle Year, the overriding thesis of the CMPS can be summed up in this phrase. Don't listen to me. Listen to what I say. It doesn't matter who tells you a truth. It matters that you are able to entertain a possible new truth independent of who delivers the message. Intellectuals versus critical thinkers. Two concepts that are extremely important to understand when talking about advancing science in the right and most productive directions. And if you like this video, please consider sharing, subscribing, and hitting the thumbs up. And be sure to check out other videos on this channel because you won't find anything like it on the internet.